What's up everyone? So today we're going to be talking about labs. I keep <coughs> getting questions of if I've or not. No. <coughs> so <laughs> what's up everyone? <laughs> On today's video, we're going to be talking about lab work. So I get a lot of questions about what labs someone should run, what they shouldn't run, what they need to run, yada, yada, yada. One, if you're super healthy and a natural athlete, you probably need to run less than more. But if you haven't gotten normal blood work run in a long time, I'm going to highly recommend a full panel, including your normal CBC panel. So you're getting your red blood cell count tested, your white blood cell count tested, your cholesterol levels tested, so your HDL, your LDL, your triglycerides. Uh, don't just get like a total cholesterol score because that tells you nothing because I've seen people that have super high HDL and low LDL, which is amazing. And it comes back with a high score. So get the complete test on the cholesterol. I would like to see a ALT and AST score, which is going to be your liver enzymes. On top of your liver enzymes, I do like to see your kidneys. So by your kidneys, I mean creatinine and urea both of them on top of that GFR, which is your filtration rate of your kidney. This tells us basically how well your kidney is actually functioning and getting stuff in and out. Sometimes you have high filtration ratio and your creatinine score is a little bit higher than it is. And it's probably not a big deal. I'll probably resolve itself to a degree, but you should address it nonetheless. Kidneys are slow to recover. Livers are very quick to recover. So if your enzymes come back elevated, and I will do deeper dive later on into all the lab work and the numbers. But if your liver enzymes are elevated, it is perfectly normal for an athlete. Keep in mind that these numbers are based off of normal people, not athletes. So when you're breaking down the muscle and everything like that, you are constantly having extra pressure on the body. So pressure on the liver, you're also probably eating more food. Um, you may be getting a little bit of pressure on the kidneys from potential muscle protein breakdown with your creatinine. Um, so those things are perfectly normal. So if you have below a hundred ALT, AST, you're not dying, I promise you. If you have it in the few hundreds, definitely need to look at it. So that being said is anything I'd probably say below a 50 score is really good on ALT, AST. If you're getting over the 60s plus, may probably need to start addressing the liver a little bit heavier. Um, the next piece of this is going to be your thyroid panel, especially for you women out there. Get a full thyroid panel done. What I like to see is if you haven't gotten this run in a while, I like to see your TSH, your free T4, your free T3, not T3 uptake like your doctor is going to run, free T3. And then on top of it, I do like to see TPO antibodies. This can be an indicator for something like a Hashimoto's or a Graves disease, or what it can also be an indicator for is if you're potentially going to be damaging your thyroid. So your TPO antibodies are really high. You probably don't want to prep because your thyroid can potentially get damaged and damaged for good. So that's just a high level overview of like what I like to see on a thyroid panel. Some people do need to get other things checked out, especially if you already diagnosed with Hashimoto's or Graves disease. That is something you want to regulate a little bit more frequently on that thyroid panel, maybe more in depth test. Now, the next piece at a high level, what I like to see for hormones is I like to see your testosterone levels, your progesterone, your estradiol, Estradiol is the one that I usually like to see more so than anything else. Now these three are usually not tested by doctors. You have to go to a specialist and then you will not get the other tests probably run at the same time due to insurance reasons. This is one reason why I try to stress to people usually go through a private source or of some sort, whether it's an HRT clinic, whether it's a private MD labs or a life extension or whatever it may be. If you need resources, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you out. Even if you need an HRT clinic, I'm more than happy to point you in a direction. I'm here to help you guys. So 
that those are some high level overviews of what I see. Other things that I do like to see, vitamin D. I like to see in women, iron, ferritin. Um, I also do like to see DHEA. DHEA can be an indicator of whether or not you're having issues with the overall flow, especially in women, overall flow cascading down into your other hormones. Now, pernagnolone is going to be the one that starts it all, but DHEA follows in line right after pernagnolone. So I do like to look at DHEA sometimes. If you're having elevated stress markers, then these things tend to pick up pretty easily within these testing because they're also going to be doing basically um, lymphocyte tests and stuff like that to see if you're having maybe potentially infection of some sort autoimmune issues in women a very cool test to get run is i may butcher this one but i'm pretty sure it's called ca125 a test for ovarian cancer um now keep in mind if it comes back high it doesn't mean you have ovarian cancer you could have uh, been on your menstrual cycle of some sort so but it is a good thing to get a read on like i said these are more high level overviews of what i would personally like to see and these are kind of like one-off additions that you can add in there later on. If something is coming back off, usually you want to get a deeper dive into it, such as a CPK score. I highly recommend to bodybuilders, especially enhanced bodybuilders, to get CPK scores test done. This is essentially, it's going to test, it can test for muscle trauma, brain, skeletal. There's a three different ones. Actually, I believe there's four off the top of my head. Um, that it tests for and then there's a breakdown that you can get later on so if that score comes back high you can always get another test where it breaks it down into the three different ones to see what's actually happening sometimes it's just severe muscle trauma where your muscles are just con constantly getting broken down and you actually can't recover faster and usually you will also see this correlated into your elevated kidney markers so the cpk score is pretty cool it also can be a good sign for looking at either heart disease a good heart disease or potential renal issues. So CPK score is something that they usually don't add in there, but it is always a nice to have, especially for enhanced athletes for sure. So that is a nice addition. Um, I think that covers the majority of it. Now, one thing I will say that's kind of doo-doo that a lot of people push is cort blood cortisol testing. Like, the most accurate way to test cortisol levels is going to be your urine testing. It's going to be urine analysis. It's a four point test where you're doing morning and then I believe it's every three hours. Um, the, when you go to the bathroom, you basically pee in a cup and then you basically you get four points through the day and it shows your cortisol levels and what they're doing. The cortisol test in the morning is kind of more of a garbage test, honestly. One, you might have to wait three to four hours from upon wake up anyways, and your cortisol levels will naturally kind of rise. And then they're like, oh my gosh, your cortisol levels are high. It's not an accurate test. Don't freak out over it. Now, if, you, if your cortisol levels come back high and your other lab work is showing that your cortisol levels are off to a degree or high or low, then it means something. But if it's just the cortisol levels that's sky high or super low, it might not mean anything. So just keep that in mind that I don't really think that cortisol testing on blood work is extremely important. I don't care what anyone says because I've had people try to argue their points in the past where it's really important. If you want an accurate cortisol test, you go get a urine test and you it's a metabolite test. Um, or you get a Dutch test. Dutch test actually includes that. Uh, if you're worried about your metabolites and the way that your hormones are pathwaying, Dutch test is something that people are not talking about really because not many people know how to read a Dutch test, but they will become more popular within the next probably say two to three years. We try to stay ahead of the curve here. So Dutch testing will be more popularized later on, but it tells you the way that your that your hormones are pathwaying through your body. So these women that are having severe like menstrual cycle issues or these complex cases, sometimes it does get to the point where you want to do a metabolite test, which is a urine test. It's not a blood test. I love blood tests. They're kind of a tried and true for me, but there are time, points and times where a Dutch test does make sense. Like I said, most people don't really talk about Dutch testing because most people don't know how to read it and they're not versed in the subject. And they're much more complex to be able to read because you have to know how the hormones are pathwaying. You have to know everything from E1, so your estrogen one to E2 to E3 to E4, your four different estrogens 
They're talking about DHEA. They're talking about your androcene. They're talking about everything. They're talking about every single hormone that you could possibly have in the body. It has, it picks up on. So you get a good read if someone's androgen dominant or not androgen dominant. In blood work, you can usually tell that as well, but it's definitely 100% more accurate on a Dutch test when you're doing it. So that may be something else that you take into equation is instead of spending as a woman, 300 to $400 on lab work to get your labs run, which $300 approximately gets you a really, really, really good comprehensive test. If you're going in the private way and not through a doctor, a doctor would probably charge you about like two to three grand for the testing if you could even get it run. Um, so that, that test would be really comprehensive, but if you're having some severe issues and you need that Dutch test run, then what you're gonna do is I would just rather run the Dutch test instead and see where you're at. Now, what someone's gonna be doing that runs a clinic is they're gonna try to sell you if they even run a Dutch test. They'll run a Dutch test and blood work because they make money off of you two times. I would say to save yourself the money and do one or the other, see if things are coming back wrong, if things are severe. I have seen some people that are so in their heads that they think that something is wrong and there's really nothing wrong. They're just a high stress person. They think that everything's wrong and they're Googling every single thing, every single symptom that they have. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, they have 15 different autoimmune diseases and really they don't. Or maybe if you have 15 different autoimmune diseases, maybe you should just get a GI mapping run and get a gut test run instead of looking at blood work or a Dutch test. Go get some GI mapping tests run. A gastroenterologist will not run that on you anyways. I've found zero doctors in the US so far that will run GI mapping on someone. And I've had clients that have gotten colonoscopies run, endoscopies run, um, H. pylori test, like you name it, going down the list of the most expensive testing that they can do, ultrasounds. And they still won't run a stool test. I'm like, just run a stool test on the person, please. They run a stool test. Next thing you know what comes back, oh, look, SIBO, what I originally anticipated it to be was SIBO and then other things along the lines with it. It tests for everything. So if you are having, it's very, very dependent on what is going on in your body, what I would recommend getting tested because testing is not, ex, not cheap, <laughs> definitely expensive. So um, normal lab work on a male, you're looking at between 150 to $250, depending on how comprehensive you want it to be. On a woman, depending on how comprehensive you want it to be, it's between 250 to $400. It could go up depending on what comes back in the lab work later on. When it comes to GI mapping, you're looking at $450 approximately to $500. And then when you're looking at Dutch testing, it's approximately $400 as well. So my number one word of caution is don't get ripped off by some of these people that are gonna be like, hey, let's run this test and this test and this test and this test. They should be able to run one test hopefully and have such a good shot at what they're going to be addressing that they start to fix you within a month to two months to three months, three months on the high end of the scale. These people are trying to push you out and run all this lab work over six months to a year. Now obviously you need to rerun labs during this period of time to make sure you're heading in the right direction. But if they can't fix you within six months to a year, then there's bigger issues going on. I've seen some people that say that they, they, on average, they need 18 months. They're trying to take you for your money. And I'm just gonna say it blunt like that. So now don't get me wrong, some issues do take a while to address. Three months to six months is a relatively good amount of time frame to start at least making progress in these um, issues. So that is just my standpoint there. I hope I am going on a rant now, but Overall, I hope you found this video helpful on what labs you should get run for blood work, when you should choose a Dutch test over a blood test, when you should use potentially GI mapping if you're talking about autoimmune diseases over a blood test or a Dutch test. There are good reason, rhymes and reasons to get one, two of the three run, but it gets very expensive when you continually have to run very expensive lab work. So be very particular on when you run your labs I'd rather pay a few extra bucks now and get more run than less run and get all your answers in one shot than have to rerun labs with everything yet again, plus some. Hope you found this video helpful. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe down below. I'll see you all in the next video.